experienced weekend navigators usually have a good understanding of their local waters based on their years of sailing there and by studying charts over time. When planning to set out on new or unfamiliar waters, it is essential that you find out beforehand where it is safe and where it is dangerous. In particular, you need to be aware of dangers such as shoals, reefs, land and hazardous seas and currents. The best references are the Admiralty charts, which are used by the Royal Australian Navy, commercial shipping and many small craft operators for both coastal and offshore navigation. Admiralty charts are particularly accurate and provide considerable detail. In particular, they give you the water depth at low tide, the coast and its features as seen from the sea, latitude and longitude, the compass rows, navigation buoys, beacons and lighthouses, direction and rate of tides, locations of hazards, including tidal overfalls and eddies. These charts use standard symbols, which are contained in this book, Symbols and Abbreviations Used on Admiralty Charts. There are many local charts available in Australia for small craft operators, such as this Parks Victoria Guide to Recreational Boating on Western Port, produced by the State Government Authority. Other guides are produced by commercial interests, such as this Beacon to Beacon directory, which has become a boating bible in Queensland. Even for skippers very experienced in their location, it can be wise to carry a chart on board in case they need to change their plans or to take shelter in an unfamiliar area. When sailing in tidal waters, it is important you know the time and heights of high and low tides to avoid the risk of running aground. Check the tide chart before you go. Nowadays, most recreational powerboats have depth sounders or fish finders on board to help them avoid running aground. They are inexpensive and many have a warning signal to advise when the water is becoming shallow. If you intend to make long coastal voyages, you should know how to proceed from point to point in a safe, efficient and seamanlike manner. Modern electronic aids such as this GPS, or to give it its full title, Global Positioning System, can be a great help, particularly with this map facility. However, for safety's sake, it is a good idea not to rely solely on a GPS. It is advisable to have studied coastal navigation first. You will then know how to use the appropriate navigation instruments, such as the compass, parallel ruler and dividers, to get the most out of the information on your chart. You'll get more pleasure out of planning your voyages, and you'll feel more secure if something does go wrong with your GPS. In summary, by studying the chart carefully before you set off, you should be able to navigate safely as long as you take the tides and weather forecasts into consideration. If you share this information with your crew members, they will find it interesting, reassuring, and they should be able to help you navigate along the way. Time and tide wait for no man. On some waters, there is little or no tidal flow, so the depth of water scarcely changes, and you do not need to worry about strong currents. On the other hand, there are places where the tides can rise and fall many metres within hours, and tides can run at six knots or more. If you're putting to sea in a tidal area, you must know the times of high tide and low tide, and the height of the likely rise and fall of the tide, before you go. If you don't, you'll risk running aground, and perhaps waiting for many hours before you're afloat again. Check the tide charts first, and you should never be left high and dry. Tide charts are available from most marine and angling outlets, usually free of charge. You can also get the times and rise and fall of the upcoming tides in the major daily and local newspapers. Dangerous sea conditions occur over sandbars where lakes or rivers meet the sea. They are even more treacherous during a run-out tide and at low water. The golden rule for crossing bars is, if in doubt, don't go out. If you're boating near to home, you may know the local waters like the back of your hand. You'll know where you can go safely, when, and what areas to avoid. However, if you're going out into new waters, or waters you don't know well, it is important that you check the local conditions before you put to sea. Check the Admiralty chart or local marine maps, which give you accurate details of the safe waters, shallow areas, and the locations of safe anchorages and launching ramps. Seek advice on local conditions from the local users, whether they be at the boat ramp, the yacht or fishing club, angling shop or marine supplier. Strong winds bring dangerous seas. 
An invitingly calm sea can quickly become very frightening after a sudden change in the weather. Waves larger than the boat was designed to handle are a major cause of accidents and drowning. Never ever go out on the water without knowing the weather forecast. If it is going to blow, don't go is a handy motto. There are many sources of information. The media, television and radio news broadcasts and the daily newspapers give reports from the Bureau of Meteorology. A number of organizations and volunteer groups such as Coast Watch and the Safety Councils broadcast forecasts and weather warnings on marine band radios at regular intervals. You can get the latest information from the Bureau of Meteorology yourself from recorded telephone messages or from a weather fax or on the internet. When the forecast refers to the significant wave height, remember that some waves may be up to twice the significant wave height stated and wind speeds can be up to 40% stronger than the maximum given. When at sea, listen to weather forecasts on the public or marine radio. Keep your eye on the sky. Beware of rapidly darkening or lowering cloud. Squalls may not be far away. Head for shelter or for home. The Bureau of Meteorology wind warnings are as follows. Strong. Average wind speed, 25 to 33 knots. Gale. 34 to 47 knots. Storm, 48 knots or more, 